This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the ramp start procedure for the early access AV-8B night attack found in DCS World. We'll start by closing the canopy with left control C, then we'll move over to the right console and enable battery power and the generator by right clicking on their toggle switches. Then we'll enable the boost pumps and fuel proportioner and the fuel cutoff valve on the back wall as well as the DECS switch found above. At this point we can initiate the engine run by right clicking the engine start toggle switch to the left of the generator and silencing the master alert by left clicking on master caution. At this point engine RPM will increase until it stops at 0 092 until you advance the throttle past the idle cutoff allowing the engine to continue its startup. At this point, the engine will continue spooling up until it reaches its normal idle running RPM, and we'll simply wait for that to happen, so you can skip ahead if you wish. At this point, with the engine idling normally, we'll move on to the external lighting panel, found on the left console. We'll enable the auxiliary, anti-collision, navigation and formation lighting, as well as enable the master switch into the normal position, full forward. Oxygen can be enabled just aft of this panel. Just ahead of the throttle, enable power to the pitch, roll, and yaw SAS, as well as Q-feel, the pitch and roll trimmer. will enable power to the flaps and set their position as desired. In this case, instead of auto or cruise, we're going to set it to V-stall, since we're taking off from a FARP. Now moving on to the upfront control, just below the HUD, we will increase the display brightness for the UFC, increase volume for COM 1 and 2, and we can set our COM 1 and 2 frequencies as desired using the preset channel selectors. We'll increase brightness for the HUD using the bottom left knob, and using the bottom right toggle, we can toggle between barometric or radar altimeter. At this point, we'll increase the display brightness for our left and right MFD using the rotary above. Currently, the display page is available for the MFDs are quite limited. I'll have the left one displaying the HSI, and I'll have the right one displaying engine subpage. Supply power to the radar warning receiver with the dial to the right of the right MFD. Below it, you can supply power to the countermeasure system. I have it on automatic. And below that, you can supply power to the jammer. In the electric panel, I set the VUHF RCS operational and channel mode into transmit guard plus preset, although it's using easy comms at the moment. Further back, I set the internal lighting as desired, and in front of the stick, we'll move the INS mode into nav. In early access, it's already pre-aligned. At this point, looking at the HUD, we could see information as displayed in the V-stall master mode, and as I move the angle for the nozzle, we could see it being adjusted on the HUD, as I set it to a value of 82. At this point, I'm ready to do a vertical takeoff, so I'll enable the ejection seat with the lever to my right. I'll disable the parking brake, which can be found below to the left side of the throttle. And at this point, I'll enable the H2O for the engine, at which point I will hold the brakes, throttle up, release the brakes, and begin a vertical takeoff. From a stable climb, I'm going to pull the gear in, at which point I'm going to slowly return the nozzle control lever into the forward position to return the nozzle back to a zero angle for forward airspeed. And as I do so, I'm going to return flaps back into the cruise position and disable the H2L, as we have very limited amount available. The remaining H2O available can be found displayed above the brightness knob for the right MFD. At this point I'm in the air, I just need to pick up a bit of airspeed, and I'm off. And with that you have the startup for the early access AV-8B night attack in CS World, and I'll continue to update this video as it gets updated throughout its development. So be sure to comment on what you want to see next, although keep in mind it's in early access and many of its systems are not in place at the moment, or still under development. 